central issue in this election campaign is the condition of our most loved institution, the National Health Service. But these have not been easy years for the NHS or those working in it, and the Health Secretary responsible for the NHS in England may have his work cut out, explaining why its future will be brighter under the Tories. And he joins me now. Good we morning, tend Andrew. Good morning. We tend to bandy numbers a lot in these conversations. Let me start with a very simple question, which is, if I wake up in the middle of the night and I've got some pain inside me and I'm rushed to A&E, how soon should I be seen? Well, the standard says that you should be seen within four hours, not just seen, but also treated and either discharged home or admitted to hospital. Okay. When was the last time the NHS in England hit that target? Well, we haven't hit it for over two years. Um, it's not acceptable. Uh, we have a plan to get back to that standard. But um, it's so also important... if people vote Conservative, can they expect you back on that standard, hitting that standard after the election? And if so, why? Well, I think... With respect, you've got to look at what's actually happening in a &E departments, which is, despite the huge Longer pressure, weeks. the huge pressure of an ageing population, uh, half a million more over 75s since 2010, we are actually seeing within that crucial four-hour standard more than 2,000 people every single day actually being seen within the standard. Now, demand has gone up by faster than that which is why we're investing in more doctors, more nurses, we're putting in more funding than ever before. And yes, I'm absolutely saying that we have said uh, we intend to get back to that standard next year, and it's very, very important that we do so. Because uh, another good example of how the NHS is performing or not performing um, is the 18-week rule, which is that, again, if I'm in a GP's surgery, he says, I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Marr, there's something serious happened to you. You have to go into hospital for an operation or some kind of uh, procedure. I will be seen within 18, I'll be there within 18 weeks. And again, how, can you remind us how many people are not seen within 18 weeks at the moment? Well, the standard is 92% and currently we are on 90%. But if I may say... So in you terms are, of people not yeah, being seen, that's yeah, how many? That's a significant number. But let me just say, you've picked two examples. I don't think that is a fair reflection of the performance of the NHS. And this is important. But just before the election was called at the end of March, the NHS published an independent report in which they said that if you take most major conditions, heart attack, stroke, cancer, so on, outcomes have dramatically improved over the last five years. And the example they gave was cancer, where they said that 7,000 people are alive today who wouldn't have been alive if we'd kept with the cancer survival rates of 2012. And I think people watching this program, there will okay. be thousands and thousands who will say they've had a good NHS experience. They recognise the pressures on the NHS, the pressures on some of those crucial standards, which we are absolutely committed to getting right. But they can also see that there are more doctors, more nurses, more funding than ever before. No, nobody is saying, and I'm certainly not saying that nothing is going well in the NHS, I'm not saying that at all, but those are both two rules that you set yourself the four-week rule and the 18-week, the four-hour rule and the 18-week rule to be judged by, and you have failed on both of them. But then, 370,000 people are now are not seen within 18 weeks, and that number is going up very fast. 100,000 in the last year alone. Well, they are very, very important standards, but they aren't the only standards. And let me tell you another but they're important standard: to the humane yeah, working of the NHS. Absolutely, but so is making sure that we don't have a repeat of what happened at Midstaffs. And if you look at what's mm. happened since 2010, every day in the NHS we're doing about 5,000 more operations. But the number of patients being harmed, the proportion being harmed with things like uh, blood clots, avoidable falls, pressure ulcers and so on, mm. is down by 8%, despite yes. a huge increase in activity. So I think there's fantastic things happening in the NHS. I think it's very important that, so that people I, like I you say, I focus on the bigger picture. I do understand that there are good things as good. well as bad things, but here is the Royal College of Physicians saying, our NHS is underfunded, underdoctored and overstretched. Patients are waiting longer on lists, on trolleys, in emergency departments and in their homes for the care they need. An increasing number of people, although clinically ready to go home, cannot safely leave hospital as the care system is unable to cope. People's lives are being put at risk. That's the Royal College of Physicians, that's not the BBC or anybody else. It's a very, very serious assessment of where the NHS is under Jeremy Hunt. And what has Jeremy Hunt and what has this government been doing about that? Um, because 
I agree we need more doctors, and since I've been Health Secretary, we've actually got 6,500 more doctors. We've got 15,000 more nurses. And on the funding issue, I think this is the really this is what crucial... I want to come to, yeah, OK, well, let's, let's talk about that for a moment. Uh, so we did have a, a very difficult period straight after uh, 2010, after the financial collapse, we had mm -hmm. uh, the austerity period. Um, but then, towards the end of that period, as soon as we were able to, as Conservatives, because we are absolutely committed to the NHS, we want to be the party of the NHS, uh, since uh, over the last three years, we're putting in an extra £6.5 billion pounds a year. And the result of that is you're seeing an NHS well, which has got more funding, more doctors, more nurses. But I put it to you, not enough. I mean, you've got a real problem of pay in the NHS. Nurses who have had seven years of pay freeze, uh, I put it to the Prime Minister, the Royal College of Nursing says that nurses are having to go to food banks at the moment. And she said there were complex reasons why people go to food banks. Are there complex reasons why nurses have to go to food banks? Well, let's look at the facts. Uh, the minimum a nurse can be paid in this country is £22,000, £27,000 in inner London. Uh, that assumes they do no night shifts or antisocial hours, which in practice most of them will. Uh, the average pay for nurses is £31,000, which is and more than by 11 the national... And by 11% in real terms. Well, we don't agree with those numbers, but that's still they're getting paid more than the national average. But is that enough considering so the question, brilliant work... That, no, you've got to let me answer the question. Is that enough considering the brilliant work that they do? I think many people would say we want to pay them more. I think they do an incredible job. So if you want more money, and yeah. you've asked me this before, if you want more money to go into the NHS, and this government recognises we will need to put more money into the NHS and social care system because of the pressures we face, then the question is how you get there. And there is a exactly. non-NHS issue that overshadows everything which is the Brexit negotiations, and I, I'm sorry to come to this, but it's very, no, very important don't. because... I'm you're coming to it. Because um. if we don't get a good Brexit outcome and we don't protect the economic recovery, the jobs that uh, so many people depend on whose taxes pay for the NHS, if we get a bad Brexit outcome, that will be a disaster for the NHS. And the choice that people face is do they want a strong... Theresa May doing those very difficult negotiations. We've got 27 countries lined up against us. Some of them appear to think that for the EU to survive, Britain must fail. And we need a strong Prime Minister, or do we want Jeremy okay, Corbyn, well, who can't even get his own party to agree on Brexit? Let me interrogate Brexit. that a little bit. In terms of the good deal that you say this country must have for the NHS to thrive, presumably that does not include no deal. Would, well, a, would, would no deal damage the NHS badly? Well, uh, we've been very clear that uh, no deal is better than a bad deal. Um, and, and I'm asking you whether no deal, leaving without an agreement, would damage the NHS, in your view? Well, we want a deal. We think That's not a my deal. Question. Well, no, no, we. Let me answer mm. very directly. We think a deal. Getting a, a good deal would be better for the NHS, better for the economy, better for jobs, better for all of us. But uh, we also recognise that a bad deal will be bad for the country, bad for our long-term future, and we're not prepared to say that we will get a deal at any cost. And the, and the real question, though, is... But with respect, I'm sorry, with respect, what you're really saying is good is good and bad is bad. And what I'm asking you is, if we don't get a deal, is that bad for the NHS? Well, um, you're showing a lot of respect to me this morning, and, uh, and thank you for that. But I would just say this, that what I'm saying very clearly is... And, answer to your question, Andrew, which is I'm saying that a good deal would be best good. for the NHS, um, but obviously um, a bad deal would be the worst possible outcome for all our public services because it would be bad for the country. Now, the question because is... Because you could answer you... this whole no, no, thing no, no, very but... straightforwardly. I've got an idea for you, which I saw. I picked up from the side of a bus. We're paying, according to the official figure, something like uh, 18 billion over the next few years, 12 billion per year over the next few years to the uh, EU. We could take that money and we could spend it on the NHS. You could go to the Prime Minister and the Chancellor, Philip Hammond, you could say, that's what we need for the NHS. I'm on the front line, I know, that's what we should be spending and that's what we should be promising the British people during this election campaign. Well, what we're promising the British people is uh, the credible promise that if we want, as this government has shown, an extra, you know, six and a half billion in the last three years alone in the NHS, if we're going to continue putting more money in, then we need that good deal, that strong economy. We're not going to uh, promise stuff that we can't deliver. My, my worry about some of the promises you hear from Labour is that if you start making promises on the NHS 
and then you find you can't deliver them on things like nurses' pay, uh, what actually ends up happening is you end up having to lay off nurses from our wards and then we go straight back to all the problems that we had in mid-staffs. But I, just, I think there's a very important one. You know about stroke care better than mm -hmm. many, many people. And, and I think stroke is a very good example of the good things that are happening as well as the challenges in the NHS. Because, because we, according to the OECD, have seen some of the biggest improvements in stroke care in this country, uh, saving thousands more lives. That's a fantastic okay. thing. But, but what we now have is new technology that can save even more lives. Now, what I want is funding for the NHS to be able to do that new technology. And I know that with a strong Theresa May battling for Britain against those other countries, we have the best chance of getting that deal. And the, the well, it's, look, it's looking pretty cantankerous at the moment. I mean, it's been a very, very cantankerous week on both sides. And a lot of people looking at this think, do you know what I, what I don't want is a punch-up. I want a proper grown-up negotiation with mutual respect and so forth. I don't want a punch-up and I don't want to hear Juncker saying one thing and Theresa May coming back at him and thump, thump, thump. Well, we all want that. But what I would say is that... Uh, there is something very different about this election because in a normal election okay. you are choosing a Prime Minister for the next five years but this time we're choosing a Prime Minister who will do the Brexit negotiations that will last okay. for generations before, and that's why we Theresa come back May's to role that, is going to be so important. We, I'm sorry, sorry. Before we come back to that, you're announcing big changes on mental health this week. Um, you're tearing up the Mental Health Act and I wonder why and you're going to appoint, I'm told, 10,000 new mental health experts. But you've sacked 6,000 of these people over the last few years. So what's going on? OK, um, well, first of all, uh, this is a very important uh, decision that we're going to deal with two real injustices. If you have a child that has uh, severe mental health problems and you find that that child, instead of getting treated by the NHS, actually ends up in a police cell, that is a terrible thing for the child, probably make their condition worse, um, but it's also very bad for the police as well. We want to stop that. And we also want to stop the, the fact that one in six of us um, have a mental health disorder, depression, anxiety. Can the government stop that? No, no, not, we, we want to stop the fact that you can lose your job for that and suffer discrimination uh, in a way that you would not be able to suffer now if you were disabled or... Um, other conditions and, and we want to address those. So uh, Theresa May has a very important economic mission which is to get the best Brexit deal, protect Britain's jobs and our economy but she also said on the steps of Downing Street that she has a big social mission. She says she right. wants a country that is works for everyone. Is there any new money everyone. for this? Uh, there is a lot of new money going into it. We, in January we said we're going to put an extra billion pounds into mental health services and by... And this come from other parts of the NHS or is it new money to the NHS? No, it is, come, it is new money going into the NHS right. that's going into mental health. Um, and, you know, it's not just, of course, money, it's having the people who deliver these okay. jobs, which is why we need the 10,000 extra professionals. We, you've talked about Brexit several times. Can I ask uh, whether the Cabinet understands why and how the European Commission is trying to interfere and rig our election campaign? Well, I think it's very plain for everyone to see and I think that because Brexit is the significant issue that overshadows everything in this election uh, that it's a decision that's made by the British people and what people can see is that Labour, the Liberal Democrats and the SNP yes. have all said they disagree I, with Theresa May's approach. So, so are you every saying, vote so are for you Theresa May, what we're saying is every vote for Theresa May will strengthen her hand in those negotiations because they will say to the Europeans who are causing us some of these problems that the country is four square behind Theresa in getting the best deal for Britain. And she said that they were deliberately interfering in this country's election to produce a... Presumably what you think is that they're interfering to help Jeremy Corbyn uh, against the Prime Minister. Is that the allegation? Well, I think, you know, yeah, they, didn't have to to, they didn't have to leak these reports to newspapers of uh, dinners that happened in the middle of an election campaign. Sure. And, so and why did they do it? Well, it is the wrong approach to negotiations. Uh, we want good negotiations. We want a good outcome. I'm sorry, and the Prime Minister said this was about trying to fix our election. And I'm just asking you, how are they trying to fix our election and in whose favour? Well, you know, you'll have to ask them why they chose to do that. But I think the answer is very clear that they are trying to uh, leak reports that undermine Theresa May's position and I think what the so British people know... the Conservatives in this election? I think what 
the British people I'm know sorry, is it is for them to decide on this, not for people from other countries. Are they trying to damage the Conservatives in this election, in your well, view? Well, that must be the presumption. And ah, what we're okay. saying is right. that they should not be doing that because this is an election for the British people to decide. So the Commission is intervening in this election to try to jam damage the Conservative cause and therefore to benefit the opposition parties? Well, we're saying we don't want that to happen. It shouldn't happen. And this must be a decision for the British people. Yeah,